it's my great pleasure to introduce Arnold Reindorp, who is our next speaker, who is a researcher, an independent researcher on urbanism and architecture, holds a chair, and I'm going to have to read it because it's a long title, uh, is the, uh, the um, Hans Lammers Chair of Spatial and Social Economic Development in the New Urban Areas of the, uh, at the University of Amsterdam and has previously held visiting professorships at the University of Berlin, is a distinguished scholar in the fields of urbanism and um, the search for new public spheres, and is going to talk to us this afternoon. Um, and there will be time afterwards for questions as well. Arnold, thank you very much, and welcome to the Actors' Agents' Attendance Symposium. Thank you very much for your kind words and thank you very much for inviting me here. I tried to resist it a long time. I've tried to resist this, uh, accepting this invitation, but it was an offer I couldn't resist at the end. So now I'm here. <laughs> um, I will talk about, uh, about the, the social. It's a, in fact a very strange phenomenon, the, the social. And I'll try to uh, elaborate, elaborate on, on this, um, on, on uh, the, um, with reference to the uh, Dutch history of housing and urbanism. But it's not my main point. My point is this very strange phenomenon of the social. And I think we can see at the moment the return of the social. But I think also that it's, it has quite other forms now than it had before. Um, so, uh, yeah, just that, let's begin. <laughs> First, the rise of the social. And it's risen already. <laughs> so it's uh, nearly flying away. But uh, first, I will, um, I will introduce some of my uh, key concepts to you, to you. And one of them is the idea of the public, because I will be talking about public space and collective space, but the strange thing is that when we're talking about public space, that no, nobody asks, nearly nobody asks the question, who is the public? In fact, what is the public? So I will so say something about the public, and then I will um, uh, talk a little bit about the, the difference and the um, uh, between. Um, what uh, Michel de Certeau, or I should say de Certeau, is in English, <laughs> Michel de Certeau uh, um, called the, the, the difference between tactics and strategies, because I think that's very um, important to understand something about this idea of collective space on the other, and on the other side, the public space. So, um, and then um, this, this is, um, the, the public, I said that it's a very, very interesting question because what is the public? Now you could say that as we sit here as uh, artists, intellectuals, public, we are the public. We can think about ourselves as the public. So we, I'm talking to you as a public and we are going to discuss things and so, so we, we, very, we, very, we are very net and need a very distinguished public as we sit here. And that's in fact also a very, the very, maybe that's the basic idea of a public. Um, and then in contrast to uh, the other uh, characteristics you see here, the crowd and the mass. And um, you may, might be, uh, this maybe the, 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 the name Robert Park, who is the author of this book, is familiar to you because he is the founding father of the Chicago School of Urban Sociology. This, he's rather famous. In, uh, uh, with his studies uh, uh, of Chicago in the uh, beginning of the uh, last century. But this is the title of his dissertation. He wrote it in Germany. And I think that's, that's exactly, the, 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 that was a problem at that time. The, the, the distinction between the public on the one hand, and the, of course, Robert Park also was part of the public, and the problem of the crowd and the mass. And I think that this idea of the social, the rise of the social, has everything to do with the, um, the, um, 
um, ideas and the ambitions to maybe to, to, to bridge this gap between the crowd and the masses on the one hand and the public on the other hand. I think the, the idea of the social is very much also, uh, in fact, about the em emancipation of certain groups, uh, working class groups, uh, popular groups. And to make this clear, this is, a, this is an, 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 uh, uh, with a reference to a, a more actual publication, it says it very clearly, crowds were bad citizens, mass and isolated um, individuals were weak and vulnerable citizens, and publics were good citizens. And I have the idea that these distinctions still are, that's not as something of, of the past, but that there's still some reference in our ideas about mass consumption or consumer culture, etc., in contrast to the public. Or also the whole idea of about popular culture and high culture, that you can hear the sounds of this, the echoes of this kind of thinking. It's about the public and the masses. Then, of course, the <coughs> I, I saw some recognition by the name of Michel de Certeau, so I think that's familiar to, to you. These, uh, this distinction between the strategies and the tactics. But I think it is very fundamental to think about this when I mean, you think about housing, you think about the social, etc. That this, in fact, what you see here in the left, in the left uh, corner, that is that the, the, the famous playground uh, designs of Aldo van Eyck here in Amsterdam. And they are very good, but they are you could say that they are part of a certain strategy, eh? helping children to play, etc. Um, the nephews of those children, living not in the new west areas, but in the inner city of Amsterdam, they created, of course, their own playground. And that is, in fact, that are the tactics. That's also what the Michel de Certeau says. Strategies, they dominate a certain field. They have a domain. They control that. Tactics, tactics have, no, uh, have no domain of their own. They are playing. Tactics are always playing, working on the domain of others. And that's the, that are the domains that are distinct, that are uh, controlled by strategies. So when we're talking about housing and social housing, then we're talking about strategies. And there's nothing wrong with strategies. I'm not of the school that is, I'm, I'm very much fond of tactics and I'm very against strategies because the strategies are about emancipation, they're about education, they're about healthcare, they're about light, air and green in urban planning, they are about community. There's nothing wrong with these aims of these ambitions, but it is top down, Stephen, it are strategies from big, uh, from, uh, from, from uh, political and, and uh, social institutions. Um, on the other hand, the everyday tactics have something like a playground. This is a, a mental map uh, from a study we did in the uh, New West area of Amsterdam. Um, and I like this kind, this, this, this is one of the mental maps I like very much because it has also in its, in its design, it has something like the, uh, the map of a theme park. I think this is a very playful way of looking at your own neighborhood. We just ask people, can you draw for us your neighborhood? And that is one of the, such a picture. What you also see is that the neighborhood is much more larger than the uh, environment around a home. But everyday tactics are about routines, and it is spatially spoken. It is about roots, and it is about rituals. Okay, the rise of the social has everything to do with the, um, also has to do with the invention of a very specific domain or realm, and that is the collective realm, as we call it. And that collective domain, that is in fact also a spatial, spatial domain, 
that is the realm of uh, emancipation, of incorporation in the civic body, you could say, of the incorporation of certain groups in society. And it is about cohesion. It is about cohesion within these groups. And it is very connected to, yet it's a very strange translation maybe, maybe in English, but in Dutch it is maatschappelijk middenveld. But civic midfield is maybe also a very good translation, the midfielder as a kind of uh, um, in between, between uh, the state and the citizens. So that's also housing corporations and other associations, co cooperations of, 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 of different kind in, in the field of education, the field of health, etc. Ne the Netherlands has a very, very distinguished, you could say, tradition in organizations that are not state organizations, but that are organizations in between. The other, where I, will, I will be in the end, I will, I will be more talking about the public domain as a realm of culture exchange, but that can wait. So, this is a very famous example of this collective space as a spatial form of the, the social. Maybe some here knew it. It is here in Amsterdam. It is the Spaarndammer Buurt in the west area of Amsterdam. And what I think, what I think the, the, the architectural form is also, is also very specific. You have these, these blocks, but these are, blocks are kind of, kind of a double inner and outer outside. I mean, it's, it's, it, 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 what it, it, it seems to express is a kind of cohesion and solidarity uh, with the group, the inner ring, and the outer ring is something like defending this collective space against the turmoil of the city, the chaos of the, of the city, around the city. And what you can see also is that it is not one block, but it is also there are several blocks. And the idea was that this collect, the, 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 the collect, the collective domains, that they were, they were uh, connected with, uh, with a kind of, of gates. And that did, so the, the collective domain could in fact spread over the city and connecting all this kind of, uh, this, this in fact, uh, uh, connect this, this domain of emancipation and incorporation. Um, over the traditional uh, 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 public space uh, of the city. And I think there is always has been, this is I think essential for this idea of the social, that there has been a, a, a very strong uh, uh, contrast between the, the public space of the city and the uh, collective domain. Also in all kinds of services like uh, cafes, uh, uh, certain shops, uh, working places, etc. Um, what happens in the uh, history of social housing in the Netherlands, and that is very much, as I already said, it's very much connected to urbanism in, the, in Holland, housing and urbanism. And it, 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 this is a project in Rotterdam in the pre-war period, and it seems to escape this collective space. The door is opened in this block, and it is dispersing the collective space is dispersing over the whole city, you could say. And that is in fact what, what you see in the post-war period is that the, coll the collective space is in fact sp spreading all over the city. It has in fact infected or it has taken over the public space of the city. And I think that is important because the public space of the city is always the space of difference, where different groups, users, different groups can meet, and the collective space is the space of emancipation of one or several groups, but it is a very homogeneous space in this sense. This, there is this, a strange history of, uh, of, of this post-war uh, housing uh, schemes. Because in World War II, there was, were lots of discussion between architects, also in the architects uh, organized in the uh, SIEM, the Congrès International des Architectes Modernes. And when you read a book by Gideon at uh, Time, Space and Architecture, that is based on 
some of these discussions, then you see that this, this space of social housing, this collective space of social housing, is in fact the result of a discussion about Paris of, or London, Paris or London as two models of building the city and building residential areas. Paris, of course, with the boulevard model of Osman, and you could say the type of public space, and London with the squares and crescents, what in fact are no, not public spaces, but are collective spaces owned and used by the residents of the block. And there's also the, 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 this idea of the collective space and, 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 and public space you can also find in the contrast between the housing in Paris, the apartment building, which also had a mixed, uh, a mixed function, mixed uh, uh, residential uh, uh, um, situation, and the townhouse of London, what was very much the house of a certain one certain family, and what also in its inner organization has a very uh, uh, strong uh, distance from the more private uh, 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 spaces to the public space of the city. And it's also in cultural life, this is a far more mixed uh, situation in Paris than the gentleman's club in London. So it is very strange to see that the space of the gentry of London became the model of our social housing project, projects, not only in Holland, but also in France, Germany, Sweden, etc., because of the international connections that existed inside. This, this and this are very much connected. And I think this, when you're talking about uh, Dutch housing, it's not only about well, uh, housing corporations, or it's not so about state, but it is also a development of a certain uh, domain, a certain realm, that is that collective realm, and it is uh, very much aimed and focused at these emancipatory ambitions, political ambitions, strategies. Um, that comes to an end. There is, I worked in this the neighborhood, I began my career as a town uh, planner in the urban renewal operation in Rotterdam. This is the old west uh, area, just, uh, just, just the site, the, the center of Rotterdam. And of course the 70s and the 80s were a, the, was the period of participation about uh, uh, people uh, uh, getting influence in, in the whole planning process. And you could say, in, 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 in a way you could say that, that 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 process of participation, that the idea of participation, in fact, was the end of emancipation. Em emancipation had come to its end. People said, okay, we are emancipated. We are citizens now. We are incorporated in the civil society, etc. So, but we still like to live here in the inner city because that was always the idea that when people uh, uh, get it better and were incorporated in society, then they moved out to the more suburban areas of the city. So this idea of, 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 of participation you can read as a, a come to a, an end or an, in Dutch you could say, an full ending. I don't know what the right English expression is, but it was a succeed. So. So social dem democrats and other political parties, they could say, okay, we reached our aim, it's over. And that was this, this kind of, uh, of planning that came in, in, in the, uh, uh, instead of the, the, the more uh, uh, inner city uh, restructuring plans. But what you can see, and as I said, I was, I was, I was uh, partly, not partly, for a large part responsible also for this uh, kind of urban renewal. In fact, what we did 
in this inner city area was a little bit creating a um, residential area as we built it outside the city, in the, in the outskirts of the city. Not only that we tried to make more space, because it was a very, very packed uh, a neighborhood, so it, it could use some space. But what we did, we made some squares, and in fact, we were not interested in making public space, but we were still in this modus in this of collective space, because the, 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 the several, the, the, the program or the services that we uh, the created on these uh, 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 new public spaces, that were the library, that were schools, that was the health center, all these kinds of things. And what, 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 what there, there were, of course, also many workplaces and many shops, etc. And some, uh, there, there still exist some of them, but lots of this kind of functional mix was also removed. The blessing is that we were not obliged, we were, we were, um, 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 yeah, we, we, we were not, not, we couldn't touch on the uh, um, through uh, uh, roads, so the, 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 the shopping streets, etc. And I think that is, that is very good because that were, that is, that are still the public spaces that connect the neighborhood with the city. But in fact, this whole model is, and I, I, I must say, I, I after, after my, my job as a, as, as a planner and, 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 a, and a manager of, of urban renewal, I became a researcher and I reflected also on my own things. <laughs> So that is a bit painful, but <laughs> Neymar, what we did, it was for us, this kind of urban renewal was of course an answer to the big reconstruction plans the, of the capitalist city, etc., etc. But what we did was in fact going on in this very strong tradition of Dutch housing and urbanism. We, yeah. It was in our genes. In our genes, we couldn't. We couldn't do. We couldn't do it. Uh, it no. <laughs> this, this, and I think that's that. I, I think well, uh, and still that's also the case nowadays. We are still in discussions, and I'm becoming more and more radical in it because I know my own history. This, I know that you have to be radical to to give an, an another to uh, develop an other kind of planning and housing, but it is very strong. It is unescapable sometimes. Okay, but the, we could say some more about this period. I think it is not to be nostalgic, not too much talk about my personal history, but it was in fact the end of emancipation, but also the end of a society that was characterized, characterized by the organizational man. That's the book of William White, who is also on an architect a bit famous because he made also a very mm, nice book about uh, public space in the city later on. But this was one of his first studies, the organizational man. And that organizational man, and woman of course, but organizational man is the or, that, is the, 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 that is the worker of the big organizations. That is society organized by big organizations, industrial organizations, uh, businesses, but also uh, trade unions, uh, political parties. That is the society of organizational men. And I think in the same time that this urban renewal operation was going on and the end of emancipation was reached, also you saw a very strong and also fast uh, move, a change from the society of organizational men to a network society, to the society of much smaller organizations of, uh, and that I think, that's, I'm not the first uh, person to, uh, to say that, but it had, enormous consequences because it was not only a uh, big change on the level of the economy, but 
the consequences of it was, what I said, the economical organization also uh, 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 was formed, uh, trade unions and all kinds of associations, etc., that were connected to this kind of economic structure. And by changing the economic structure, the uh, legi legitimacy or the, the ground, the basis of this social organization also disappeared. So it, there was, in this whole idea of the, the social organization, put, and I think, and that is, I can say that now, but it is, it is in fact on the, on the end of my, 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 my talk, um, I think that that is also, in a certain way, the reason of, for the decline of the social. We saw that for the social was very connected to these big institutions like the corporate, uh, corporations, trade unions, schools, etc. So, what we see is that, that you, and, that, and, and then yes, it's the restructuring of the economy, um, an idea that immigration is not a, a uh, is an ongoing process also in, in, in Holland, immigration as a permanent immigration, because of course the rise of the creative classes is not beginning with the Book of Florida, but this also began already in the 70s. And you can see that urbanity, as in contrast with this collective uh, idea of, of, this, of space, that urbanity in a social sense takes command again. This is not the homogeneous uh, 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 population of neighborhoods, but that neighborhoods began more and more heterogeneous and diverse. Now, yeah, the co that's not the end of collective space, but the change of character. The Woon Urban. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, that's not English. That it is the when you <laughs> when you look. When you look for it in, in an English, English or American dictionary, you find the word, word "wound earth," but then the uh, the the, the way that the mere fout the <laughs> the plural, yeah, the plural is "wound earths." The "wound earths," because that's not correct in English. Um, <laughs> so that the collective space that is the collective space is not. Over, but it is. It has not. That it lost his its char character of a space or a realm of emancipation. It is just a form, you could say. Um, the. That's it is also in the, the same period. You will see that is an, an, a, a cartoon in a. Um, um, in a paper, a daily paper, Trouw. Uh, and it is uh, this in the reaction of the uh, Pieter Gene, the, uh, the, 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 who draw it, that there was a, a plea in, in the parliament um, from, the PV, from the PVV, the Dutch Populist uh, Party, um, as a reaction to kind of uh, small riots in, uh, in Gouda, that they had a plea from that the army should inven, uh, intervene. And then you see uh, the, that's your, uh, the, the older man of uh, Gouda, and he says, this is ridiculous, this intervention, this idea of intervening with the army. But the interesting is the argument, it is stupid, he says. Of course, uh, the, the army can't, can't, there's no place for the army in the, in the neighborhoods. <laughs> and then you see all the professionals that are intervening in those kind of neighborhoods in Holland. And it is, of course, a drawing, but it's true. <laughs> it's a true picture of the men of the housing corporation, there is the school teacher, there is the uh, men of the city, there is the police, of course, the, 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 wor young, the worker for the youngsters, there is now all this kind of, all this kind, and I showed you this picture, not because it is ridiculous, because all these professionals are doing the utmost to very good, but there is a kind, there, is, there has been a change in this 
eh, wat hij zegt, the, the collective domain, the social, the social has lost its emancipation aim, but it is not true. The emancipation aim is not still there, but what, has, what, is, what, what in fact is, is get lost is the connection of these strategies with the people they are doing it for. Because in the 30s of the former, uh, the, 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 the last century, there was always the connection between the people and the, 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 the groups that were also, also the, 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 the object of the uh, emancipatory strategies. But they were in some, in, in, in a large, in large part also the subject as part of a political party of trade unions, etc. So the, what in fact is, 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 is the problem in, in, in the 80s, in the 90s, and nowadays, this is very recent, this in fact, is that it is lost, the, the, the intervening organizations and in institutions has no connection anymore with the, uh, the people as, 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 as uh, uh, they, 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 are, they are working for. So what we need is, I think, is a, a change of perspective. And that's, I think, where this conference is all about. We have to, um, to think about the city again as an open city, as a creative city that's characterized by open networks, innovative city, a city that's based on curiosity, and in fact, a city that is, you, uh, the, the, what we, what, what, what we need is another metaphor. No longer the metaphor of the machine, the emancipation machine, but the metaphor of the bazaar. In urban sociology, we have four metaphors for the city. This urban sociology is very simple. You have two top-downs and two bottom-up metaphors. The top-down metaphors are the machine and the organism because we are talking about the organic city, but the organism is, in fact, a top-down metaphor. The machine, of course, is more technocratic, and the organism is more natural. But what we need is the, the other metaphors. Think about the other metaphors. They are not, they are on eye level, bottom up. And the, the pleasant metaphor is the bazaar, because everybody knows a bazaar, and everybody is yeah, confused, but also you feel happy with all these kind of uh, impressions you have as for. The other side of the mel of Bazaar is the jungle. The jungle isn't, of course, unsafe. It is the city as an, a place where you can feel lonely, etc., etc. But the Bazaar is a very good uh, idea. The, the, the Bazaar is, 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 is the, 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 the metaphor we need now. And the bazaar is also connected with the tactics of Certo and the machine, the emancipation scene, with the strategies. And in this same, this, in, this, in this move from the machine to the bazaar, we see that the collective domains are now um, um, replaced by what we call parochial, parochial realms of parochial domains that are like, like the collective spaces, that are spaces of certain groups, like we or like other groups, but they are more spread over the city and they are um, uh, sometimes overlapping each other and then you can speak about the public domain. A public domain, I was afraid that I didn't have any homeless people in my presentation. But <laughs> I have. <laughs> but it's, my picture is also <laughs> about curiosity. You see that? That is the white middle class family comes to the city because they are curious. And you can also see that it is a very um, gender specific um, picture. Uh, the cu <laughs> The idea of the curiosity is much on the side of the father. <laughs> but what you also need in public space is safety. And that's the mother. But maybe we can change those roles. But what's important is, is, is that 
the city is also in this kind, in this, it is, it is, it is, a city is a theater, a city is to look at each other, to, to, to act, etc. And I think that in this whole, whole idea of the bazaar, there is the important is about culture, it is about culture exchange, it is about conflict and contrast, but it is, it is about culture exchange. And that's also, um, I think, it is also a factor of an aspect of emancipation, but not from the machine thing. Now this are, we tried this whole idea, we tried to map, then we tried to map these different worlds, the different parochial realms of different groups in the um, uh, New West area, post-war area of Amsterdam. Because when you, there, is, there, is, there, are all, there are many stories about the Amsterdam West area, the most of them are very negative, it is in decay, it is a problem, etc. And we try to look uh, what's happening there. What's happening there in my, and that, that also the, 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 the mental map I showed you already, this is a mental map by what we call our original uh, uh, urbanite, so the, the traditional population of the neighborhood. And in fact, what this uh, woman is, has drawn is very much the urban plan, eh? the urban plan of, of the, uh, the emancipatory strategy. But there are other, these are four, and they are very different. And it's also that, that's interesting. Eh? How different are these different uh, are these, 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 these mental maps and as different is the experience and the, the meaning of the neighborhood in uh, uh, everyday life. We mapped them also in a more, uh, in a more, more objective way by looking at all kinds of services and, and places that are connected to different groups. But what, it, what is the problem of the social is nowadays that, is that there are different worlds in this kind of neighborhoods. And the different worlds, but they share one space. So in the, four, in the, in, in the, in the, in the decades the, the uh, neighborhoods were built, you had, in fact, you had one world. And now you have different world, but it's still the same space. And an interesting question is, is there a kind of growing a new, a new public familiarity, that people looking at each other but trusting each other. That are, I think that are the problems nowadays of this, of the social. Um, so, that's my last part, very fast. Maybe we can go further in the discussion. The return of the social. What you can see is that the, the there are still uh, uh, growing, uh, this, uh, the, uh, maybe that's, that, 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 is, that is also growing. There are new collective domains. And may, you could say, no, the, oh, that's are the gated communities, but there is a, there are, there's a very large um, spectrum of new collective domains. This is also, there's a, all, these are also new collective domains. I think the importance of the collective domains is the connection of the place of the, with the people, they use it, but also manage it or take initiative to it. That is new collective. And of course, the whole exercise that we, we, we did in the New West area, it also uh, was, it was, it was a search of new public domains. Where are new public domains um, uh, developing? Um, yeah, that's just still the, about the, 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 the city as a theater. These are, of course, the older traditional inhabitants, residents of this area. And the question is always, where are they looking at? Now they are looking at this. And that is, I think, the fun of the city as a theater, that you sometimes you, you only you, there is maybe not a connection or an exchange between people in the sense of talking with each other, but I think this is very important that this happens and that these older people are looking how these children play and also how the mothers of these children uh, think about um, um, what's, what is, 
what is just, what is good, what is not good in the act, in what, 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 what uh, children do. Um, what I found, and that is a fact of all it is, is of course the, 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 the agenda of this conference, but the return of the social seems to be also the rise of the culture in. There's a very important aspect of the rise of the social, this is the rise of the culture. And I took this, um, uh, the, the, the project of uh, um, the neighborhood as hotel in the Transvaal. Um, the initiative taker is also here and will speak uh, tomorrow, Sabrina Lindemann. But the neighborhood as hotel is so very much, I think it's, it's not only a project, but it is also a very good metaphor of the new idea of neighborhoods and social housing projects we are looking for, because it's about temporary uh, uh, residents. It is about um, the, 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 the familiarity of the local or the strangeness of the local for people that do, doesn't know, that do I mean, the, uh, the global has something more familiar when you look at airports, etc., than the local. The local can also be a bit uh, unfamiliar. So it is about, uh, uh, this project is about all kinds of, uh, of uh, aspects of that new social. But the return of the social, I said in my, my title, it is the return of the show, so, social, but not as we knew it. And I think that is, that's, that's the search we're now doing. Um, one thing is clear, that the return of the social is not a part of the conflict between the state of the choice, between the, choice, the, choice between the state of the market. I mean, we have, the, the whole, the, this have been the, the, the last decade, there's been a very, very strong discussion focusing on we don't want a market, no liberal strategies, etc. So and then and, and the only response, the only alternative seems then to be the state. So the social should, be, should again be something of the state. And what I try to show you is that the history of social housing and urbanism in Holland has let us, uh, shows us that when it becomes a state affair, that then the dynamics, etc., also disappeared from this idea of the social. Because I think we have to, uh, to think about the renaissance of the public interest, and the public interest is more than the individual citizen. Whole, it is something, it is of building collectives, etc. So it has also to do with the reinvention of the civic midfield in new ways. Thank you. Um, oh, it's on. Thank you. Um, I'll, do you want to stay? You can stay here or we can come and sit and have a conversation. Um, I'm going to very, uh, I'm going to just pick up where Arnold left off and ask you what you mean. It seemed very provocative to leave us with this concept of the midfield. Oh, it's gone. Um, what do you mean? I mean, it, it was that you led us along this wonderful path through the jungles and the bazaars. When you talked about the jungle, I immediately thought about Don Mitchell's presentation, whereas you, you, you gave a very positive spin to the jungle, whereas in Don Mitchell's presentation in the morning, the jungle was, was a space embodied by homeless people. By the way, this isn't a conference about homeless people, so you don't need to have... The <laughs> Although, you know, we rather liked your homeless man. Um, but um, it seemed to me that there was uh, that there, there was a, that some of the language that has been used so far in this symposium was taken by you and 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 turned into into a, a po into something that had a positive aspect. And I feel again that you're at the end of this talking about the midfield um, and claiming that the public is a space of invention that moves beyond a division between the state and the market is quite a provocative claim, and I wondered if you could say a little bit more about that. Maybe it's risky to, uh, to uh, refer to a book of the um, British philo philosopher Philip Bloom, because he is seen as the advisor of the uh, 
uh, government now. But he has written, written, I think, a very intelligent book, Red Tory. And what he, what he explains is that you, there is not, you can't blame the new liberals only. You can't blame them for all that's gone wrong with the social of civic society in England. Because first, labor took, took it over, took the social uh, into the state. And then it was very easy to, in a second phase for the liberals or for the, the, the conservatives, to bring it in the market. But what, he, in fact, what his argument is, is that the social should be something of the citizens and not of the state and not of the market. And I think that is also the history of Dutch housing in the beginning that were where the, the housing corporations that were not, they were for partly were state financed. But there were organizations with members, associations, etc. The same with, uh, with organizations in the field of education. My father was a member of the board of the school I was in, in Utrecht. And that was, a very, was not a very large organization, we were small organizations. Now, maybe that's a bit nostalgic, but that is, that is the history. That is the, the, the origin, that is the, or that are the origin of the social. And what we now see is nowadays see is this, that there is some kind of a distinction growing also. You have the state, you have the market, and you have the citizens. And I think that when we want, when want to move forward, then you have to look at new forms of cooperation. Corporations, new forms of housing associations, new, uh, new forms of collectivity. Not to, um, um, there, there, of course, there, there is also in Holland a stark, uh, stark uh, uh, movement of, of, of citizens uh, building their own house. But when I'm thinking about the other things that you need in a city, in a neighborhood, uh, education, healthcare, uh, uh, work maybe, etc. Then you see at certain, and you, you can see some, some of these new initiatives. That's also in the, in the sphere of uh, creative work, creative class, uh, uh, creating their own uh, workplaces, etc. And I think that's, that's, that, that's a way to, to, to move on. So, uh, I'm, not, I'm, 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 I'm not so liberal as I look like, maybe. But um, I think that it's, there is some misunderstanding between the public space and this, that it is always connected to the state. We, in our book, what I, I wrote with Martin Heyer, we have also said the, the, the public domain, the book In Search of Public Domain, the public domain is not a legal uh, uh, thing. It is not every space that is owned by the state is public. No, public space is how you experience it. Is there, is there cultural exchange? It can also be a private space, can a company space or a shopping mall. This, I mean, the whole idea of, and that is, I think that's not, not typical Dutch, but also in Britain, in Germany, and all the European countries, there's this very strong connection between public and the state. And I think yeah. that's not what the public is about. Okay. Thank you. Um, it's interesting that Martha Rosler talks about the fact that there are no publics left, there are only audiences. So she makes a further distinction, but Martha's... Well, that is because in English, you can... The public and the public... <laughs> I mean, this is very different. Yeah, yeah. In Holland, you can talk about, and in Germany also, you have the Öffentliche Raum, and so that is this, this another distinction. But, we talk about, when I talk about parochial realms, that in fact there are different audiences in English. Yes. Different publics, but in the yes. sense of audiences. Yeah. Okay, let's open this up, because I think this is, this is, we could have a good argument here, I can feel. One first question over here, or statement. Could I ask you to stand up sure. and say who you are? Hi, I'm, I'm Carolyn Strauss from uh, Slow Lab, Design Research Laboratory here in Amsterdam and in New York. Um, many things, but I'll try to be brief, because we've been doing a project in the northeast of Amsterdam um, in Oostlijkhavgebied about the social uh, sort of and social sustainability potentials of the 
around the historic Lloyd Hotel and uh, that area. And I won't get into that project except the, the interesting connection between this idea of hotel and, a, and actually a bit of graffiti I came across when the project was well underway on the new conservatorium hotel at, at Museum Plein, which said, uh, at minder hotels, mere social hur, which means less hotels, more social housing. Um, I'm curious if what, if what Don Mitchum says, Mitchell says is true, that Europe is kind of following the US in terms of social housing, the fact that just a year ago, squatting, which previously was a sort of a, a what was outlawed, which was previously an expression of um, questioning private property and civic participation, the fact that social housing is declining here, it's maybe will begin to take on the status it has in the US of, of which really is representation of disenfranchisement and not participating in society. So is, my question is, is this new social you're talking about, this new public, and we're doing projects very similar to what you're talking about, is it necessarily subversive? And I guess we could add to that, is there an assumption that a public is subversive? Generally. Sorry, I would say especially in the Netherlands, which I find interesting, is that, um, you know, what my experience living here for four years is everybody owns their square meter, they occupy their own square meter, and as long as you stay within that, you know, as long as in the public realm, as long as you follow the rules, you're allowed to continue to be here and to, and to occupy that space. So, um, I know Shana van Heesweig will talk about this tomorrow, and she, in her series, she did Academie van Baukunst earlier this year. Um, pretty much every speaker ta talked, showed examples of subversive behavior and how that was at least advancing their agendas, but if not necessarily involving or getting the approval of the state. Yeah, in a certain sense it is. It is, it is uh, the, the notion of the public is um, about the space of diversity, as I said it. But it is not, I mean, it is, you could also say it is, it is important in, 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 I think it is in the Dutch discussion, it is important to, um, to come with a, a concept that is in, in a way, indeed, in, against this whole idea of, of collective space, because that is so. What I showed you on 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 on, on my my own experience uh, in uh, in uh, the first job I did in uh, our West in uh, in Rotterdam, that's a very strong tradition, and I think that we are we what we need is two two things: the thinking about new collectives, and there are all I think there are all kinds of examples that there are people developing uh, developing and in, in, uh, very innovative uh, in, in, in in new forms. And the other, the other is that you, we have to deal with differences. We have to learn to deal also with conflict in space, of space that can deal, maybe you can say, spaces that can deal with conflict and not only with harmonious life together, living together, etc. And that's, I think that's not only a Dutch problem, this is also in, 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 in urbanism, also in the, um, in the schools of urbanism, and you see that that not that the, the the aim of harmony is in fact uh, the, uh, the the program for the for the design and not not the, the not 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 conflict and keeping distance etc. There's a very strong idea of social cohesion etc. and living together etc. But living together, I think, has all everything to do with keeping distance and spaces for conflict. I think this is not so much subversive, but it is yeah. <laughs> looking <laughs> at reality. I mean, I have sometimes discussions with, with architects of ur urbanists, and what, what they say is, yeah, look, that people has conflict with each other, that's not our problem. The, 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 the social worker should solve that. So if the social server now uh, um, works on the social cohesion, then we have no problem in designing space because then we have a harmonious, uh, harmonious uh, community to deal with. And I think that is, that in effect, is, that is what I'm, I'm aiming at, uh, provoking to think about conflict and not about living together. Thank you. 
Fulia, a question. Uh, thank you so much for this wonderful uh, presentation. I just wanted to ask you uh, what you have said uh, last, bring out the conflicts. And uh, at the beginning of your lecture, while you were describing Henry Elsner's uh, a, a distinction between public crowd and mass, you mentioned that the public is the good citizen. So I am uh, kind of curious about that. And uh, I just want to ask you, is it the citizen who disturbs the status quo and show up the conflicts, or for instance, the, the occupations right now? Or a good citizen is uh, following the status quo and the uh, uh, program uh, given to her or him. So, what is good citizen? <laughs> now, that the, the citation was not from my hand, yes. um, but I think there is a common common uh, thinking that the and, and what good, the go, a good citizen is in this sense a good behaving citizen, huh? a citizen who knows the rules and is educated, etc. And um, that's also the, con the contrast with things like mass culture and popular culture, etc. And people n not behaving but drinking on streets, etc. That is not good citizen. But I think when you ask what my opinion is of a good citizen, now yeah, maybe I'm, I'm very much near Hannah Arendt, who says the good citizen is a citizen that stands up in public space. And this, that's an, and, 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 and not only discusses and debates, but also act, act in public space as a political person. What's not a politician, but as a political person. And that's what we have seen the last months, of course, in, in, in Egypt and everywhere, that citizens are, but uh, I think that, that, is, that is, of course, oh, this public space is also the, the place of conflict, of course. But it's not designed as a space of conflict many times. Maybe it is, it is, it is, maybe it's not necessary, I don't know. But it is, when, when we are talking, and, and also our, our concept of culture exchange is in fact a very friendly concept, eh? looking at each other. And now my, you said already, I'm very positive in my metaphors, yes. bazaar, etc. But I think that, it, that this, this idea of, of, of conflict in public spaces, of course, for the idea of the public realm is essential. And the good citizen is somebody who stands up. And like, In what way? Uh, maybe some, sometimes in a demonstration or something like that. Might, that that's, that's part of the idea of public domain. OK, we have time. I'm afraid we only have time for one more question. Um, and the first, I did, that was the first, you were the first person that I saw. <laughs> Sorry, everybody else. My sort of question is about your phrasing, your naming of, sorry, my name is Andres Wichering. I'm based in Amsterdam, I'm an urban sculptor. I'm very interested in these sort of um, moving boundaries between private, between the, um, uh, semi-private, let's say the, the, the public domain, which is owned by a private person or, or a company, but is, is, is public, and what we call the domain in which, which is the, the responsibility of the city, of the, of, the, of, of the city. And they sort of, in an ideal city, there is no boundary. You know, it's, it's, it's fluid, it's clear to the public, where they can move and where they're not supposed to move. What I see in, in Holland is that there is a strict uh, line between what the sort of, um, let's say, the larger corporations, the banks, the, the larger buildings, they, they feel they have a certain responsibility for, the, for, for just the, the area around their building, very limited. Then they say, well, then next comes you. And what the you is, it is we, that's the society, that's the state or something like that, to take care of it. Um, it has to do with the idea of, of every citizen taking responsibility for their own sort of little space around their house, taking care of that. 
or not. I feel in Holland very much we have a sort of attitude by now that it stops at the front door. Everything beyond it is, oh, that's part of the community, so they have to take care of that. I find that as, a, as an urban sculptor a very difficult uh, realm to work in, you know, because it's, it's, it, I hope so much in doing my work to expand this sort of feeling of personal responsibility by the citizen and of course by the, the builders of the big corporations, like uh, to use an example, what I, I find one of the many things I really like about this, this uh, aspect of work in the United States is that a lot of the big corporations take care of an immense area of public space around their buildings, which is an example, I feel, of what, what the society used to do as well. That, that's, that, it's wonderful, and then the moment you come beyond and the city is responsible, then it's a wasteland. Thank you. I've, could I, thank you. Could I ask for a quick response to that? <laughs> the quickest response is, uh, I agree. <laughs> so I let the but away. Yeah. Maybe we need to leave that as the hangover, which is something about large corporations looking after the city it, to take that into the next, <laughs> into the I, next I, session. I, I don't want to blame the state for everything, but the idea that the environment of your house is, in fact, a public space, so it is the responsibility of the uh, government, of the... Uh, uh, I think that's also uh, is part of this, this decline of a uh, public idea, what's more a public idea in the social sense. Because uh, the, 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 the stoepen in het Engels, maar de stoepen hier in Amsterdamse grachten, voor die canals hier, de, 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 de stoepen, they were always part of the private space of the houses. But in the same time they were public space because people were allowed to go over it. Not everywhere because they are on this kind of small gate. But the idea of um, the, the, our idea of public space is also another idea than the space for the public, like it was in the 19th century. Because here in Amsterdam, also the Vondel Park was, of course, a private collective space owned by citizens, and other citizens were allowed some days to use it. And that is, it was a public space in the sense that it was, in fact, uh, owned or used by this public as good citizens, eh? this, this good behave. So you could you could imagine a, an, an idea of public space that is maybe privately owned, but it is in a kind of uh, hospitality also used by different groups. In, yeah, that's that's not idea than the idea of public space as the space of the government. Arnold, I'm sorry to cut you off and cut off the discussion, but we need to move on. Arnold, thank you very much. That was a very stimulating thing. <laughs>